This video is going to be a little bit different. Um, I recently reconnected with my old love for jigsaw puzzles. I used to do a lot of them. And recently, <clears throat> just because a friend also does puzzles and I started talking about it, I was like, why not? I'll I'll go back and I'll try to do some. And I just realized how much I love that, uh, that activity. And so I think I'll be doing more puzzles in the future. And if you're interested, you can stop by and there will be probably reviews about them. Also, it's different from playing board games uh, because while it is still intellectually interesting, I don't do puzzle by just blunt force by serial trial and error, but the fun is to try to figure out strategies to optimize my effort to, to, uh, to be as efficient as possible. So it is still intellectually engaging, but uh, it's demanding in a different way from, say, remembering a rule manual, which is 20, 30, 50 pages, and having to deal with all of that mental mental activity. There are days where my daughters, uh, uh, shall we say, have made my day very interesting and at the end uh, I'm still dealing with that and so just sitting down and solving a jigsaw puzzle can be very relaxing. So the puzzle I'm gonna tell you about and that I recently completed is that Tibetan Buddhist mandala a thousand piece puzzle by palm grenade and uh, it is a puzzle that once you complete it will be 20 inches by 27. Um, I don't know really anything about the subject, I'm not an expert on the topic but I think the image is stunning and I really like the fact that when I saw the image online uh, and then I ordered the puzzle, it looked challenging. Again, precisely because I love puzzles, not just because of the of the final beauty, although that's, that's important, but because of the challenge that they present. And I can tell you, this is in fact a demanding puzzle, at least from the point of view of the pattern and the images. It's only a thousand piece, so when it comes to adult puzzles, it's fairly average, even I would say on the lower end of things. So maybe I'd say it's probably the most common, probably it's the most common size that you find out there. Also was the first time that I tried a puzzle by palm grenade. The previous puzzles that I saw were usually by Ravensburger or by Buffalo. So I saw the puzzle. I'm gonna show you the puzzle and show you how it looks once it's finished and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the process that led me to complete the puzzle and what I think about the puzzle. This is what the puzzle looks like when it's completed. It's really nice. The level of detail is staggering. I don't know that my video will convey that, but I'm still, I'll still try to give you a sense. This is actually the orientation that probably you'll be looking at the puzzle when you will hang it on the wall when you're done. Chances are that you will want to. So up here we have this bunch of people sitting on the clouds. Yes, I'm not a scholar of Buddhist traditions. I know that I like seeing these nice looking people sitting on the clouds and that's um, that's good enough for me. And here we have all chance demons probably. Um, I apologize for the glare, but of course I have lights on the ceiling. Otherwise this video will be completely dark. We change the angle a little bit so maybe you can see the ugly faces of these demons a little bit better. And then here we have the main centerpiece with this large double frame and this decoration piece here. Oh, if you're wondering, see this frame here? This is all little, really little, but kind of happy looking people. Look at them. Look at them. We they're upside down. Let's go to the area where they're not so upside down. There. So, and also look at the level of detail of these decorations here. More small people that are dancing around this central figure with three faces and looks very happy. Now, it's a challenging puzzle. It's a challenging puzzle for two reasons. Because of the many small subjects, it almost looks like you're doing abstract art. Sometimes a piece will look nothing like the piece right next to it until you try by trial and error just because the two pieces are so different from one another. The biggest challenge, however, is that, uh, at least to me, all shapes and all colors are spread everywhere around the puzzle. 
you know, usually you have an area which is one color, an area that is another color in many puzzles, but here if you see a piece which is orange clothing, it can be on any of those or any of these demons here. Actually it looked like it was folds, folds of a piece of, clo of clothing, but in truth it was the orange from that thing. Uh, so well that's that's the biggest challenge of course that also means that instead of having an area here an area there you get to build sections differently that's for example the way I approached it was first I built the frame then I actually built these flames I was able to identify them differently from the clothing then I built uh, the sky then there's uh, this frame here then the other small frame with the people and that allowed me to anchor the green areas there. I tried to build these lines here, which actually stood out color-wise quite easily, but for some reason I just couldn't put them together. Again, because everything is in multiples. If you see, say, this decoration here, which is this vase and this hanging thing here, there's going to be another one here, and another one there, and another one there, and another one there. Everything is in multiple. We'll see a corner like that. Well, there are gonna be four. Uh, and then the part where the frames can like fold them. Again, for some reason that seemed very confusing. So everything is everywhere. The central decoration, the parts are repeated with very small variants. And so I had to approach it again in uh, concentric circles until I got to this frame, etc. etc. And pretty much I left the bodies of the demons. Again, the flame frames, just because of the color of the green around here, I was able to do it. But the bodies of the demons and those people, that turned out to be the hardest part. And so, well, I didn't count exactly how long it took me. I, my sense, it was like two long, long nights, like five hours each, and then maybe a shorter night or another long night. I would say about 15 hours, maybe. I was also watching Jessica Jones season three and a couple of other things on Netflix, so that helped, but maybe also distracted me. I don't know. What I know that this puzzle is really good quality production wise, the cut, didn't give me any problem, the pieces clicked together very well. There were many cases in which uh, the cut would repeat itself, so two pieces would just fit perfectly, but they were wrong. Usually if two pieces fit very well, that meant they were correct. And that's something that seems obvious, but you do not always have in every puzzle that you find out there. So, so production-wise, this is a very good product. Again, in real life, you'll see the contrast even better. It's a challenge. It has to be one of the most, or maybe even the most challenging puzzle that I solved from the point of view of the pattern and the content. It's not the largest that I solved, but fun. Hard challenge. So if you're looking for something that is like a little harder than your average puzzle, but it's not impossible, but it's not a huge epic endeavor, well, then this puzzle here could be a good option. It really looks good in real life. You really have to take a closer look in real life to get a sense of how beautiful it is about the contrast and the patterns. But I think you get a sense. Overall, this is a really good puzzle. Challenging, but fun.